Hello everyone, I'm Linda Marie Colon, your host for Making It Artisan Stories. And I have a special guest today, Rick Rocco from Blue Hills Crafters, Wallingford, Connecticut. And we've got a great show for you today. So tell us a little bit about what this is and uh, how you got started on Blue Hills Crafters, what it is, what's behind it, and what types of products are you making with your artistry? Well, thanks, Linda. Um, you know, I started actually doing this in production-wise only about five months ago. Oh, so um, you're brand new. Brand new, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I have been working with wood for a long time uh, just because I love working with wood from mm -hmm. making old farm tables for friends and uh, making the sofa tables. You know, they would tell, they would say, hey, Rick, I need you to make this. And so mm -hmm. I would get some, I'd find some old oak or find some old pallets or something like that. And I would make something and they would love it and they think it's beautiful. But it was just for friends and, you know, just to make something nice to give to, especially my wife. She's got three friends that love stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I would make stuff for them and they would, oh, this is so beautiful. Sustainable. So you're repurposing That's right. wood and I you're never finding use new stuff. special it's all, uses. Yeah, it's never, never new stuff. It's always something that I find on the side of the road or something like that. Mm -hmm. But then we owned a wine barrel from Govea Vineyard. My wife said for the Christmas she wanted to make three gifts for her three girlfriends and she wanted one for herself, so four all together. Okay. And, uh, and I said, well, what if we make cheese boards out of that old wine barrel in the backyard? Ah, because the charcuterie boards, they're huge Correct. now. That's, yeah, exactly. That's a great idea. And we love to party. My friend, you know, my, my, uh, we have a dinner club that we meet. We were uh, supposed to meet once a month uh -huh. and uh, it turned out to be three times a week. Okay. <laughs> so we love to drink wine. We love to enjoy each other and love to uh, eat food. And so I said, let's, let's make some cheese boards. So that was Christmas. And mm -hmm. when uh, we made the four, four cheese boards and they were not even this quality, they were not as good because they're my very first four. Um, they were like, going nuts over them they they loved them then they had a christmas party and their all their friends saw them and their family saw them mm -hmm. and said oh my gosh we should open up a business they were making I, I was just think it was funny that they were saying that so i took a picture of one cheese board that i had from my, my wife's cheese board and mm -hmm. i put it on facebook just for fun and said if you'd like to have one of these i'll make it for you that first week i got 22 orders for mm -hmm. cheese boards i didn't have one Wow, In the fact, power I didn't, of Facebook. I didn't even have a wine barrel for 22. I had a scramble to find some wine barrels to make these things. Mm -hmm. And then the second week, I got 22 more orders. Wow. And I'm up working till midnight because I have a day job. And then the third week, uh, I had 19 more orders. And I said, wow, I, there's, there might be something here. Right. You know? So this was originally just make a few gifts using a repurposed wine barrel. What goes into making like a charcuterie board like this or what did you do to make that happen and it clearly took off? I deconstruct the entire the entire barrel. Okay. I take all the bands off and when you take the bands off there's no glue. It's just held together by the bands. Right. So, so you take the bands off. What I do is I number every single stave. These are called staves. The, you know the, the it's called a stave. Okay. So I number every stave. So when it falls apart, I know one, two, three, they're, they all fit together really nicely. Okay. So when, once I do that, I actually put, put them together and I, you know, I kind of group them together, put them aside. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, uh, I sand them all down, the backs, the, the tops, sand them down nicely, not the sides because the sides belong, you know, to each other. And you kind of want that rustic yeah. look on the side. The top, this is not stained. Mm -hmm. This is the wine color of the barrel. Okay, so this is what the wine has done to the wood. Correct, yeah. And it's just and, absorbed it. And what I do is I put what's called biscuit joining. I biscuit join every single every single stave together and I clamp them together, glue in between them, Okay. and I uh, will leave them overnight. And then on the back, I actually started um, uh, cutting the steel bands and putting the steel bands back on the, on the barrel. And then I made all the, um, uh, all the legs on the bottom with oak as well. And then what I do is I put a food quality butcher block oil on the top so it's food safe. Oh, okay. That's and where the food safe yeah, is. Yeah. The bottom is, is a shellac stain. Mm -hmm. I've just brought two pieces here. I mean, this, this one here... Yeah. This one is just glued. That's all it is, just glued. It doesn't have the biscuits in it. Try to pull it apart. 
Oh, it's sturdy. It's, it's sturdy. Very sturdy. It's very sturdy. Now this one actually has the the the, uh, the biscuits in it. So imagine how much more sturdier mm -hmm. this one is. That's just glue in between three uh, three pieces, and it's like rock hard. It, it's mm -hmm. really amazing how how it's working. So so it's made very well. Very and well. You've taken from the charcuterie boards, you've expanded, and now what other things have you made? Because you've brought some amazing pieces here that look like more barrels, mm -hmm. more sturdy pieces of furniture. This is the wine barrel table. I can get two tables out of one barrel. I actually cut the centers out to get the center cut. That's why I call this a center cut, okay. because I'll cut the centers out first. I will mark four legs that I want to save. And then I have a table, and I sand it all down, and I and I of course you have to prepare it for a table. You could that's stand on those things, and they would they're usage. like rock hard. Very sturdy. Yeah, they're really nice. Is that good for indoor outdoor usage? Oh, um, yeah, it's good for both. As you see, it's got a D table, right? Yes. So if it rains on it, you're going to have to empty it because okay, it will so you hold. Have to tip it, it's going to but... hold the water. Okay. Yeah, because it's water okay. tight. I had the barrels out there for years, mm -hmm. and it. Didn't matter. I brought them in and I made a charcuterie board out of it. Wow. So. And then um, I have the uh, candle holder. Yeah, those are like festive candle holders. Yeah, this one is a three candle holder. That's a wine. I'm starting to work with bourbon barrels now Okay. from Kentucky. This is a bourbon barrel candle holder. I, I'm a real estate agent. And as a real estate agent, we're always looking for a, a gift that's mm -hmm. not too expensive to give to um, people that just bought their house or whatever. Right, what and a great. It's a great idea. Um, I started giving these away mm -hmm. for um, for gifts for myself, and now other uh, other agents are actually doing the same thing. Oh, that's great. So it's so really, that's caught on. Yeah, so it's cool. And then um, I have different size uh, charcuterie boards. I have this one, which is called the center cut. Mm -hmm. Then I have the full stave, which is 37 inches long. It's the entire barrel it's for like bigger parties you know oh, wow. this is good for a nice small party of mm -hmm. eight something like that and then i have a little one it's just it's just a half oh, like of a it. smaller mm -hmm. intimate mm -hmm. yeah. board that you can have and what is this yeah this is just for for today this is actually a lazy susan i was not incredible yeah it's a lazy susan it's it's the top of the barrel right and um and it's the it's actually the top band of the barrel that mm -hmm. i had to i had to cut down to make it a little smaller so it fits around here okay and then on the back is the actual uh is the actual Lazy Susan part of it. How long does something like that take? That one took me a couple hours. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, these things, I'm batching them now. So I'll, I'll make like 14 of them at a time. It'll take me two days okay. to make 14 of them. Uh, it's a lot of uh, a lot of tedious work. That's mm -hmm. the same same thing over and over and over for 14 of them. So I'll, I'll you know, I'll take three barrels apart. Mm -hmm. I'll sand all three of the barrels. I'll And then I'll cut all the steel and then I'll make all the legs and mm -hmm. you know so it's, it's all you know tedious mm -hmm. but um when i'm doing like little piece work like this here the first one it was just so fun to make and the, yeah. the tables i'll make two of them if i dismantle three barrels then i got three of these i'll make six of them mm -hmm. and then right over there this. that one is commissioned uh, that one um oh, oh so you do commission work yeah oh, okay yeah. so yeah, you made yeah. them for fun originally as a gift mm -hmm. then things kind of took off and you will take commission orders one of my fans actually on facebook mm -hmm. said I, I like your coat racks but i want my own my own hooks and i oh, said okay hey, you just give me the hooks mm -hmm. and i'll put your hooks on so she sent she actually bought those on uh, etsy Oh, okay. And she sent them to me. Uh, railroad ties, that was mm -hmm. big nails you see there. Yep. And uh, the rest is all you, huh? Yep, that's exactly right. I'm commissioned to make some outdoor farm tables. Okay. Uh, I have is that two... the farm tables with the matching benches? Yes. I'm going to actually have to buy some cedar okay. to make them because I want to have them out for outdoor use. Mm -hmm. I'm going to really distress the cedar to make it mm -hmm. nice and old looking. What uh, does that entail? It entails... Uh, taking some some chain and smashing these pieces of wood oh, okay. so it really has some it's uh, literally distressed it has some pieces taken out of yep, it yeah some chunks taken um, out and i i do a lot of different things to just beat it up a little bit that and then when you stain it what happens is i stain it and then i wipe it off and when you wipe it off the the nooks and crannies the the stain actually stays darker in those spots right so mm -hmm. it looks pretty cool Oh, wow. And then I have a 10-foot indoor table that I'm uh, commissioned to make. I'm making that out of 200-year-old uh, uh, oak. Where did you acquire that? As a real estate agent, I sell a lot of farmhouses. Okay. 
Okay. And uh, when they take apart like their their front porch, there is wood underneath that front porch or wood sure. up in the rafters. I just got a I just got a whole bunch of pine from a house that's 110 years old and he uh -huh. went up in his attic and he was going to put insulation in uh -huh. and he said well i don't want to put insulation on top of that old wood so he took all the wood out wow. and left it in the garage for me i just picked it up a couple days ago mm -hmm. i cannot wait to get my hands on that and you're saving it from the landfill oh gosh yeah yeah it's, it's a wow. great it, it's a great feeling to uh to sure do, you know to use it again and, and the thing is people it. love mm -hmm. that that people love seeing something that's 110 200 years old mm -hmm. you can't go to lowe's or home depot and buy that stuff you no. know so yeah so it's fun and this is all just from carpentry skills that you self-acquired my father is a is a developer he he's built houses all his life okay. and i at 14 years old i was driving bulldozers and 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 dump trucks and trucks and stuff like that he would give me a he would give me a chainsaw at 14. Mm -hmm. I'd have a chainsaw, a chipper, a bulldozer, and a, and a dump truck. And he would point to a, a lot and say, Rick, that's your summer job. Wow. And I'd go out there with a chainsaw and cut all the trees down, chip them all up, and put the mm -hmm. put them in the dump truck. I didn't have a license, obviously, but then the, one of his workers would drive the dump truck over to my house, dump the wood, and that wood was mine to sell in high school. <laughs> Really? So, yeah, so I sold firewood mm -hmm. in high school. So I was always working hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love working hard. My father taught me a lot about wood, mm -hmm. um, but nothing like this. And in fact, he, he looks at my stuff now and he says, Rick, I don't know where you got all this. Not from me. I don't know. I don't understand it. But, you know, he's got a wood shop, too. And, yeah. he, uh, you know, I think maybe it kind of rubbed off. Mm -hmm. But it's trial and error. It's all trial and error. So like this thing here. I mean, that's trial and error. I, th I thought, oh, I, you know, so everybody, I have all these tops. What am I going to do with them? I don't know what to do with them. And I said, well, what about a Lazy Susan? And What a great that's, idea. That's how that came out. So let's see this Lazy Susan. It's really functional, huh? It's very functional. It's So very little scraps <laughs> from um, your project. All the way down to, I am trying my hardest. See, these would be scraps, right? Yes. What I'm doing now, if it didn't touch, touch um, the, um, the glue... I'm actually going to start cutting them up to sell for smokers mm -hmm. because, you know, people like the wood for smokers, right? Absolutely. And, I mean, and they use, mm -hmm. someone told me that if you use an oak with the wine, it might come, it might smoke right into the, right. into the meat. It could be absorbed. Yeah. Yep. And if it's untreated. Oh, it's going to be untreated. Totally 100% untreated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of those pieces, mm -hmm. like, like the ends and different things sure. like that. And I'm like, gosh, I got like buckets and buckets of these ends oh, absolutely. and I don't throw anything out so That's great. Um, I'm going to just chop it up into smaller pieces put it in a little burlap bag mm -hmm. and say Blue Hills ch uh, fire chips or something sure you know? so entrepreneurial spirit I wake up and and say oh I wonder if I could do this uh -huh. and I I'll tell you I never get that feeling with any other business or or profession I've ever been into where I'm where I think of what else can I make mm -hmm. So rewarding. It is, yeah. Wow, that's it's incredible. It's a lot of fun. Well, thanks, Rick. Thanks mm -hmm. for joining us, and thank you for watching. I'm Linda Marie Cologne, your host for Making It Artisan Stories, and this is Rick Rocco.